Moving too fast. And Thanksgiving is late this year, I think. Am I right? It's lower down than normally, in, in, uh, right? And so what that means is that uh, actually shoe boxes are due before Thanksgiving this year. And so we need to get busy. Uh, got a good collection so far, but we still need some uh, boxes filled, and so I brought some up this morning, and so you will be expected. When you leave this morning, you get you a couple of boxes. You've got plenty more downstairs, and uh, fill this up. Uh, told me that First, Saturday morning. And starting what time? And you will make sure we have breakfast. Okay, that's important, really. Uh, so please, please keep that in mind. Got the shoe boxes. Got the, Andrew, do you need to say anything about the chili? He needs, Andrew, you need to say anything about chili? Andy needs some chili. Yeah, so if y'all will please. Okay, let's stand and sing our first song. What Denise was playing is our prelude this morning. All creatures of our God and King, there's a line in that first verse that says, Lift up your voices and with us sing. So that's what we're going to do right now. 
This is the day that the Lord hath made. So let's sing together. Praise the Lord. It's a good thing to do every day. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, you servants of the Lord. You who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to His name, for that is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob. I know that the Lord is great, that our Lord is greater than all gods. The Lord does whatever pleases him, in the heavens and on earth, in the seas and all their depths. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. He struck down the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn. He sent his signs and wonders into your midst, Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants. He struck down many nations and killed mighty kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. And they gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to the people of Israel. Your name, Lord, endures forever. Your renown. You are renowned, Lord, through all generations. For the Lord will do his name in Zebul and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths that cannot see, eyes that cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all. All you Israelites, praise the Lord. House of Aaron, praise the Lord. House of Levi, praise the Lord. You who fear him, praise the Lord. Praise be to the Lord from Zion to him who dwells in Jerusalem together. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come forward for prayer time, please. So, Father, it gives me great delight this morning to be able to lift up my sister and 
Christ to you, knowing that you are sovereign in the nature, you're sovereign in the lives of your people. Whatever you choose to do, Father, that you do. And Father, our minds wander to the New Testament this morning as Jesus walked this earth. And the Lord Jesus touched the blind eyes to make them see. He touched the ears of the deaf to make them see. He touched the eyes of the lame to make them to walk. And Father God, this morning I rejoice, I praise you, I thank you this morning. You are the very same Lord Jesus today that you were 2,000 years ago. Able to touch, <coughs> make the sick well. And Father, I just pray for our friend and our sister in Christ, Terry. I pray that you would choose in your precious, holy, sovereign will to touch and bring health and healing to her body, Father. There are others this morning on the, on the sick list. Those who are not able to attend this morning, Father, we lift them up to you in prayer. Father, especially think of Catherine and Miss Dollars this morning. I, I think of Sister Jerry back here who's undergoing cancer treatment. I think of the others, Father, and I pray that your grace, your love, your mercy would rest upon them today. I pray this service would be one that would honor and glorify your name. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak expressly to each of our hearts during this time. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. Amen. now with another song and our next one up for this morning is all hail king jesus if you're using your hymnals that's 103 of course we have the words on the screen behind me here so let's all stand and sing together already made mention of this morning, Pastor Ray, that, that uh, we have much to be thankful for, and as we get ready for our offering time this morning, we're going to sing Count Your Blessings. So, at 786, there are four verses, we'll sing them all, and then after this we'll have a time for our offering.
blessings of life that you have given us, and we pray, Lord, that we will be especially grateful to all of these <coughs> gifts and the things that you have bestowed upon us. We pray at this time for the offerings that are given today, and we pray that they will be used, Lord, to benefit those in our midst, the community, our nation, and wherever the needs may be around the world. We pray for the service that we are part of at this time and for the time to come, Lord, that you will be upon, that your spirit will be upon us and please be with the pastor as he leads us. In all of this we pray in your name. Amen.
song for you this morning that we've been working on for some time. And uh, every time that we've gotten ready to sing it on Sunday morning, something has come up and either not enough people or other, you know, the choir to do it or other things going on. But the thing that I like about it, in addition to the music, in the space of maybe three minutes or so, it's, it tells the entire story of Jesus from birth to resurrection to the second coming. It's just, it's, it's a, just a, a cool song, and uh, you know we've been looking forward to doing it for some time, and I just hope that we could do justice to the, to the words and music and the message. It's called Yahweh.
important relationship in the world any one of us have is our relationship with God. Amen. For that relationship to grow, it is vitally important that we hear from God. Let me put it another way for God to speak to us. Every time I've ever made that statement, there's strange looks in the congregation. And most often times, somebody will ask me, what do you mean? I've had Christians, many of them through the years, make this statement, Pastor, I have never heard God speak. I have never heard God speak. I hope you're not one of those persons. You mean to tell me, preacher, that God speaks to you audibly? No. I have people tell me sometimes that God spoke to them audibly as he did to Moses as he did to Abraham. If God were to speak to me audibly, I wouldn't be here this morning. <laughs> I would have dropped dead <laughs> on the spot. Can God speak to us audibly? Yes, if he chooses. There are times in our lives when we, uh, when we, uh, Go through those periods of times when we don't hear from God. You ever had those periods? Don't need to raise your hand. There are times to me in my lifetime when it has seemed to me the heavens were brass. Absolutely no sound of the voice of God. I think one of the things that uh, may often hinder us from hearing from God is our busyness. I think there's another thing that may well hinder us from hearing from God is that our lack of prayer time. Because you see, prayer is not a one-way conversation. You've heard me say it many times from this pulpit. Most of you, I think, could quote it. That prayer is a conversation between two people who love each other. That means that it's a conversation where you speak. But it's a conversation also where you take time to let God speak. And the problem many times is that we simply give God our wish list. And then we hurry about to do our day's activities without waiting on God to speak to us. But I think many times it's our busyness. And so I want to share an experience this morning that I hope will help you. It, it helped me greatly. In my busyness recently, I did not hear from God. Busy doing a lot of stuff. Particularly related to are moving. And so I had not heard 
the voice of God for a few days. That bothers me. There may have been a time in my Christian life when I would not have particularly paid attention to that. But at this stage of my life, it bothers me if I don't hear from God. It was Thursday a week ago. Our movers had come. and It's been a very emotional, uh, stressful time for us. 24 years, the longest we'd ever lived in one place. And some of you will say that's nothing. I've been in my home for 50 years. Then try moving. <laughs> You'll learn some valuable lessons from it. And so it's Thursday morning and the movers had come to take the furniture. And Mary and I were sitting there telling them which pieces to take and which to leave. And in the process, we decided to uh, clean out an entertainment center. I was picking this and that and... Uh, I discovered something. Now, you all need to help me a little bit because I'm not too smart. In that entertainment center on those shelves, I found these things that are about this long and about this wide. What did you call What did we call them? V, what? VHS tapes. Well, to my amazement, we had a lot of them. <laughs> and the strange thing was, we didn't have anything to play them on. <laughs> but being the pack rat that I am, I didn't say we, I said I. We kept those, what were they? VHS, VHS tapes in the entertainment center. And then I found a lot of, what are they? Cassette tapes. And you know what I found out? We didn't have nothing to play them on. <laughs> and then I found out something else in that entertainment center. I found some round things. What are, what are they? CDs or whatever. <laughs> now we'll get to the point. We filled up about three big trash bags of these things, this stuff. And here, Mary and I were sitting there And after a time of not hearing from God, God spoke to me. It was as clear as any voice from God I'd ever heard. Not audible, but God spoke to me. And when he spoke, I began to weep. It was a refreshing time just to hear him speak to me. Can any of you imagine what God said to me? Anybody want to guess? He didn't need to tell me that. But I'm serious as I can be. What did God say to me? A clear, clear message from God. Anybody know? No, he had heard from me. The problem was not God hearing from me, the problem was me hearing from God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Anybody want to guess? Oh, I have quoted that 10 trillion times. 
especially when I got in the attic yesterday and began to clean out the attic. And I found things that only God knew were there. <laughs> we had long forgotten I put them away. Children's toys. Children's toys. We didn't want to get rid of them. But that's still not the message, and I could talk on that all day. Anybody know what the message was? Now think about it a moment. No? You know what the message was? There were these things, and what were they, Mike? The VHS. And then there were the little things, the cassettes. And then there were the round things. Here's the message. Don't forget it. Everything is changing except me. Gone from this not to this, and I thought, we've even gone to the kids, and I can't do it, but they can do, they can play music on this thing. Watch movies on it. But you see the point, you see the point I'm trying to make is that everything is in the process of changing except And any field that you want to choose this morning, and I begin to think, think how medicine has changed. I thought about this illustration, and I won't bore you with a whole lot of illustrations, but I thought about when I first entered the ministry, and, and they didn't even do cataract surgery in Rock Hill. Folks had to go all the way to Shard. And I'd go to visit them. Can any of you tell me what cataract surgery was like? 50 years ago? Anybody know? What was cataract surgery like? It was major. You lay flat off your back with sandbags against your head and you could not move for 24 hours. And they kept you in the hospital from two to three to five days. I had cataract surgery and an hour after he had performed the surgery, I left the hospital and came home. With the only instruction this, don't bend down and don't pick up anything over 20 pounds. Thank you, Lord, I don't have to vacuum for a while. <laughs> but you see the point I'm making? Any field you want to choose this morning, any field that you want to choose is in the process of changing and most of it rapidly. But God says, I don't change. And then why is it that we anchor ourselves to so much else that's changing rather than anchor ourselves to God who doesn't change and he's constant? I hope God lets me stay here long enough, Father, so these people get a little Pentecostal blood in them. <laughs> so they know what it is to say amen. 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 I mean, that's an amen. That's a hallelujah, folks, to know that our God is the same God he was when he spoke the world. He spoke the worlds into existence. And Hebrews 12 and 8 says, and that's where I went. I, I knew it was Hebrews. I knew it was Hebrews, but I, it, I had to look it up. It's Hebrews 12 and 8. Mark that. Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God the same yesterday, today, and forever. Folks, that's hallelujah news. What you've seen is, is it, what we have seen is nothing compared to what we're going to see in the way of change. Now, one of these two famous educators here might can tell me, how quickly is knowledge changing in our world? 
and he's shaking his head this way, that means he must know the answer. <laughs> What's the answer? He says he's faster and he can keep track. Now Greg's going to have a more precise answer. What's the answer, Greg? <laughs> you see, it's changing so fast, Greg can't even keep up with it. But I'm saying to you, it's changing, folks. But our God is not changing. And I sat there. I wept and I wept until my body shook. For two reasons. Number one, that God had spoken to me. And number two, God had given me a message that ought to ring in my heart every single day. Now I want you to help me. And I've written it down. In what ways has God not changed? God's character has not changed. God's faithfulness has not changed. God's promises, amen. Boy, that's one of my, one of the things that I've written here to talk about. God's, God's character, God's faithfulness, God's promises. You, you need to write these down. Can you write? I told the young people this morning, I was giving Andy a little break in his Sunday school class this morning, and I, I was uh, in there with the young people, and I, I said to them, they spend so much time, and I've heard the real experts talk about this, they spend so much time texting each other. There's going to come a time when they won't even be able to talk to each other. You know. So... You need to write these things down. In what ways has God not changed? His character, his faithfulness, his promises. What else? God's love, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, somebody said. In what other ways is God the same? Somebody said, and I didn't pick up. Sovereignty, God's sovereignty. God is still as sovereign today as he was when he spoke the world into existence. That means that God can do whatever God chooses to do. Boy, that's awesome. It's awesome to know that God is capable of doing today as much as God was capable of doing when he spoke the world into existence. He's sovereign God. He's greater than any... One of the things that we've learned in studying the book of Daniel on Wednesday nights is, is that God, God, can, God can raise up leaders and God can depose leaders. And that frightens me a little bit when I look at our country today. Did God raise up our current leader? If he did, I trust he'll raise up another leader. What else? What other ways has God not changed? He's all-knowing. God is omnipotent. That means he's what? Hmm. Yeah, God, God's all-powerful. He's omniscient. That means he's what? He's omnipresent. That's, he's everywhere. Dr. Wayne Ward, who was a professor at Southern Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky for many years and held interim pastorates in a lot of churches. I read the other day that Dr. Ward countered a gentleman. He asked him what we often ask people that we've not previously met. Dr. Ward asked him, Sir, what do you do? And the man said, I am the Viker, V-I-C-A-R. Dr. Ward said, you're what? And just what is that? The response of the Viker was this, I am the representative of an absentee Lord. <coughs> Dr. Ward responded to him, sir, you better get you another job. <laughs> because our Lord is not an absentee Lord. He's as present today. He's as present today as he was when he spoke the world into existence. What else, real quickly? He's, he's righteous, he's love, he's peace. Anything else? 
Somebody just mentioned, I was just fixing to stop you and say, nobody's mentioned. What did, what did you say? He judge just God. Okay. Nobody has mentioned this. He's a God of love. He's an unchanging God. He's a God of promises, unfailing promises. He's a God of all power, but he's something else. He's a jealous God. He's a God of wrath. You, you, see, you see how we are. We love to, to, uh, we love to emphasize his love. And he's that. But let me tell you something. Somebody said he's a jealous God. And if he's a jealous God, he's a God of wrath. I was telling this, I think, on Wednesday evening in prayer meeting. I haven't forgotten it. I meet with a group of mostly laymen. There's a, me and a couple of other pastors drift in and out. I'm not able to go every Monday morning and meet with them and have prayer time with them. Most of them are actually from the York area, and we began meeting here in York until the restaurant closed, and then they moved to Rock Hill. And we just, we just pray. We don't have Bible study. We don't discuss politics. We just meet and we pray. And on that particular Monday morning, which was Monday morning a week ago, as I began to pray, God began to really speak to my heart. And I began to think about a son who's without Jesus. And it struck me, as I don't know that it's ever struck me in a long time at least, and that is that I have a son if Jesus came back today would spend eternity in hell and I began to think about God's wrath and I began to think about what hell must be like and with those men I sat there and wept because even though our God's a God of so much love that he sent his son to the cross to die for us he's a God of wrath so that if men reject his love men send themselves to hell I've had people through the years say to me, Preacher, I don't really believe that God could ever send a human being to hell. And I've said, You're right. Every man sends himself to hell by rejecting the love of God. He's an awesome God. And, and with the unchanging world that we're living, politically the world's changing. There was a time, there was a time, for example, when, when I mean, Absolutely nobody, nobody would, act, would ever dare take on this country. And yet on the totem pole, folks, today, we're way down here instead of way up here. And in a world that's changing that much politically, in a world that's changing that much morally, there's but one place you can anchor your soul, and you anchor your soul with God. I tried to think of all the words, but I couldn't, and our computer's out, and so I couldn't get Mary to give me any help. There's a song that we used to sing many years ago, Put Your Hand in the Hand of the Man Who Still the Waters. I can't rem couldn't remember the rest of it, and she couldn't look it up for me. But I thought, what a fitting way to close the sermon this morning. If you want to put your hand in the hand of someone who will not change, it will be the same tomorrow and the next day and the next week as he has always been. Put your hand in God's hands. Boy, when I looked at so many of that stuff that I had accumulated through the years. Now, I started to bring some of my show and tell this morning. <laughs> I found a couple of old telephones. How many of you remember the old crank? How many, any of you remember the old crank telephone? Well, there's a few old folks here this morning. <laughs> Eddie Fieldbeck and I used to fish with that once in a while. <laughs> now, some of these folks don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> then I found one of these phones where you put it up to your ear, and, you know, and all this stuff. And again, I thought, changing. But in the midst of all the change, God's constant. 
Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you, Father. I'm sorry that I became so busy for that time that your voice was unheard. And I pray this morning, Holy Father, that there's somebody here seated in this place of worship who, who, like me, got so busy. And they've been so busy that they haven't heard from you in a few days. So us down. I'm reminded as I pray this morning of what our dear layman said to me in the hospital one day. Is he brought me a little book on the 23rd Psalm. And he said, Pastor, sometimes God has to put us on our backs to cause us to take time to look up. And God, if there's somebody here this morning who may be getting close to that, I pray that you will shake them from their business and cause them to devote a time every day when they can not only share with you their heart, but they'll give you time to share your heart with them. We're wonderful people, Father. Blessed beyond measure, individually, as we sing, as we sang earlier, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. You've done more for me. So undeserving, but so blessed. Pope Greg comes to lead us in our closing song, This Is the Day. Would you just ask God to forgive you if you've been too busy? Or ask him if there's some other reason maybe that you haven't heard from him in a few days. That he'll speak to you through the Holy Spirit. He'll show you what it is. Now let me say this in closing. Please listen to this very carefully from a, from a man who loves you with all his heart. If you're not saved, you won't hear from God. If you're not yet saved, you won't hear from God except one message. Come unto me. Come unto me. And I'll give you salvation. And I'll give you rest. If you're here this morning and you just have to say, Pastor, I can't tell you if I've ever heard from God. Please listen carefully. Get alone with God today somewhere. And ask God to show you, and he will, why you haven't heard. And maybe you're a child of God, but it's been a little while since you've heard. You too need to get alone. Say, God, is there some sin that I've committed that I'm unwilling to confess? Is it busyness? Is it stuff? Is it things that have gotten in the way? Forgive me for that, Lord. Remind me every day from now until my time I go home to glory. Lay Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moss can eat away. Rust can destroy. Thieves can break up and steal, break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where none of this will ever happen. Forgive me for being so earthly minded. I've not been as heavenly minded. And God, if there's somebody else here this morning who is in that predicament, I pray, I pray with all of my heart, Father, help us to realize this life is short at its longest. Like that weaver shuttle I picked up the other day. Fastly it moves across that loom, or it did. So our lives are even shorter than that. It's like the dew that comes in the morning and then soon it's gone. Like the flower that grows up and then it fades away. Our life is much quicker than any of those symbols, Father. So help us to leave here this morning a people who love you more than we've ever loved you, a people who are more committed to you and to your kingdom and to your church than we've ever committed. 
and a people who are committed to trying to do all within our power to see that things change in this nation. Remind us every day, my people, called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I'll give from heaven, forgive their sin. I'll heal their land. You are our only answer, almighty God. Yahweh is a choir so beautifully sang. And I pray this in the name of the one that loved each one of us so very much. And he went all the way to a cruel cross. Shed every drop of blood in his body. That we might be redeemed from our sins. We might know what it is to be washed in the blood of Jesus. And I pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Stand as Greg leads us in singing, this is the day. Let's all stand together and sing our closing song.